is this video real? Am I even a real person? Or is this whole thing just AI generated? So those are some of the questions we are going to be asking ourselves every time we watch a video in the next month or so. And the product that's going to be driving that is called Sora. So today we are going to be talking about Sora. So first we are going to be talking about Sora as a product and the technology behind it. Secondly, we will be talking about the winners and the losers of this technology. And then finally, we will talk about the impact of the product or Sora on the stock market. So guys, before diving into the video, please go subscribe to the channel. We need your support and like the video as well. We are aiming for 100 likes for this video. Just click on the button there. What do you think about this Sora product? I mean, I watched a um, MKBHD video on this whole thing and I was, yeah, I was, I was baffled, but yeah, let me hear your thoughts first. It's amazing. I'm like, man, this is some good quality AI video compared to what we had before from uh, runway ML and uh, stable diffusion. This is, they've really stepped up their game, right? Again, OpenAI is showing that they have some of the best engineers on their teams, right? And they have a lot of resources coming from Microsoft because without GPUs, you can't really get this kind of results. This is a GPU war and uh, OpenAI is winning it. The videos that I've seen, I saw a few of them on Twitter and then I went to the website as well. They look amazing. They are like, if nobody told me that this was AI generated, I would, like, I would have been guys this is this was done by you know an amazing <laughs> videographer based in california that works for i don't know <laughs> a lion's gate or something it looks really really good and uh, it's just amazing really i will say some of the nature one look very good where you have like the beach or you have like a landscape from somewhere that looks really good but things that have humans and multiple subjects that's where you can see the quality is degrading a little bit. For example, you, there was a cat on the bed with a lady and you'll see the cat move its uh, paws and you feel like the cat has like more than four paws. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a little bit unnatural. There is also video where there is like some kind of wine in a glass on a table and you can see that it's not real physics, right? Yeah. You can see that it's not really simulating real life or is not really respecting physics in the real world. And they even mentioned that in their paper by saying that there are circumstances where someone might, for example, eat a cookie and the cookie will become whole again, right? Yeah, that's not <laughs> So normal. it so... has flaws, obviously, mm. but compared to what we have on the market today is way, way, way ahead. Given the quality, the way it's able to keep the subject in frame, it remembers the subject from frame to frame is very good, especially when it's only one subject. The moment the subjects are more than one, two, three, four, then the quality degrades. For people that are not familiar with this whole thing, Sora is basically, as I dare say, it is a new AI that OpenAI just launched. It's not available to the public yet and is basically text to video model uh, meaning yes. that you type prompt so you type a text and then the ai will generate a video based on what you type based on your description basically and at the moment what it does is that it is limits or it is limited to one minute video so it generates one minute clips and these clips are what we are describing just before the look really amazing the look and in terms of, you know, the other things that the Sora can do is also take an image and then turn that image based on your prompt into a short yeah. video. And also it can add, basically it can extend a video that it generated. So it generates one minute video and then you can ask, uh, you can upload that video and then it will generate another one minute and then so on and so forth. Those are the things that this AI can do. And um, it looks really, really amazing. And it there just mentioned some of the weaknesses as well. And that's what they mentioned on their website. Uh, and it's mainly about physics. This thing doesn't really understand physics. And based on what I've read, the way we see the um, output is different from how the model sees it. So the model doesn't even know what is right, what is left. It just has its things and the way it works. And it's really, really different from how we see things. I mean, you are in the tech uh, world, so I guess you'll be able to explain this thing better than me. Basically, the way these things are generated is that 
they look at what they were trained on and they just try to replicate that. That's basically what they are trying to do. And that's what the transformer model is. Like you feed in a lot of data and it's, it starts identifying patterns and it tries to follow those patterns. And that's basically what it does. Even though it's described as understanding, it doesn't really understand. It just knows the patterns and try to follow the patterns. If you have a lot of data and the data is good, your LLM will be good. Your yeah. diffusion model will be good. But if your data is not good, then you'll get the same thing out. That's basically what it is. But again, it takes a lot of power and a lot of uh, resources as far as computing resources to train these models. On the training side of things, right? Do you know Unreal Engine 5 of Epic? For people that don't know, it is basically a platform for game, game developers. Game developers. Exactly. And they use it to create 3D uh, real-time content. And there are some people on the internet that are arguing that maybe OpenAI use Unreal Engine 5 to create a database and label many, many videos and then use those videos to train their model. That's how basically they are able to generate those videos that we, we, are, we are seeing. I'm not, I don't know how accurate yeah, that is. I, but... I, I don't think that is true, but I'm not 100% sure either. But again, yesterday, Epic came out with a new rule that will prevent AI from training on its data from anything okay. that's from Unreal Engine. Because even they don't know. To prevent that from happening, they created a new term of service mm -hmm. to prevent that from happening. They don't want AI to train on their generated content. That's really interesting. And I don't think that's what they are even using. I mean, for people that are impatient to see this thing out there in the world, I believe that OpenAI are currently testing it and yep. they are basically building some other tools that would help them to detect, you know, whether the content was created by uh, Sora or not, and also working on some term and policies and also some safety procedures just to make sure that, you know, this thing doesn't cause a lot of harms. Those are the things that they are working on. And um, hopefully after those, we'll be able to pay for it and, uh, and you know, witness what this thing can do. So uh, that I think is we correct. can jump into to the second part unless you have something to, to add. The red team, if people, some people are not familiar with red team, that's what is written on their website, to letting their red team test the product. So a red team is usually either a security privacy team in a company. That will make sure that whatever you are sending out there, it cannot be hacked, basically. So they try to do the hacking inside the company and make sure that everything is working well. People cannot take advantage of the model because some of the dangers from this kind of technology can have very, very big re repercussion on everything, basically, like news, courts, proof, stuff like that. A lot of yeah. things can be compromise here. They are going to basically make sure that it's secured enough and it doesn't also infringe on people's rights. And yeah. as an example, before you could generate images using Dali tree of certain people like uh, celebrities and stuff like that. And with time, they turn that off. So whenever you input a prompt that refers to Elon Musk, for example, it's not going to work because they don't want to be using celebrity images without their permission. Technically, you have to license that. That will be infringing of, on their right. Stuff like that have to be curtailed. And yeah. <laughs> we know some people like, you know, not safe for work stuff. Some <laughs> people will be using this kind of thing for it. So <laughs> they have to yeah. prevent that from happening as well. Uh, the second part, which we are going to be kind of entering now regarding the winners of the losers, is going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun one. So the way I had it in my mind is regarding, let's say, the short term. I'll give you my thought on it and then you can jump on it. So I will start with the short term. So I broke it down into two, short term and long term in the next two years. So basically, the good thing about this thing is that this is going to destroy the stock, the stock video market. Those yeah. Adobe's <laughs> and all those platforms that we pay 20 quid for the editor can have access to those. Right. That market is going to be destroyed. And I'm very happy about that. So <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing. Only fun is, is going to be destroyed. I'm really happy about that as well. Only is fun is going to be destroyed. It, it, it will because this thing is going to be able to generate 
any type of things you want and i'm but, sure that but again they are mm. trying to prevent that from happening i know any it's the same for not be allowed. sorry for cutting you it's the same for uh what's the name uh the ai girlfriend when you go to chat gpt you can't do that but right. people use other ways to create not yeah. safe for work stuff That's where true. you have ai girlfriend and stuff so this is gonna crush only fans going to change the whole not safe for work ecosystem right right because now it has a very bad press i mean it's a bad thing it has a very bad press as well because some human uh, trafficking uh, Human trafficking, thank you for the word. There is a little bit of human trafficking involved, a lot of drugs and all those things. So with these type of things, people can generate those things without using any human, right? And then the third thing for me is going to be, I would say, the impact on the society. So yeah, those are the three things that I yeah. had in my short term. I don't know what, what you have in your mind. I'll start with uh, the one you listed last, uh, which is deep fake videos, right? Where you see someone's face on a certain body and you think it's real. Another example of this is this week, there was images of uh, kind of nudes of Taylor Swift, the, the singer online, but it wasn't real. It's someone made it up. Wow. So these kind of things are going to be prevalent now. And it's going to be very difficult because the internet is just a weird place, right? Mm. You will see political candidates doing crazy stuff. I don't know how I feel about this, especially given that the US is going to the polls in November. I don't know how this uh, is going to affect the election. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, so, is, this is something, so sorry for cutting, but this is something very, very important because I remember the election in Brazil in a few years ago, it was like maybe five or 10 years ago. Candidate won because he fabricated a story based on geez. his opponent is involved in um, kids trafficking and pedophilia and some crazy stuff. And they showed like some images, fake images, of course, and fake videos. And this thing just went viral. And the guy tried everything, but he couldn't change the, mm. the impact that I had on you know the people that were voting. So I, I think you are totally right there. That is uh, very dangerous. And um, I don't know what the world is going to look like in six months. So be prepared, guys. The internet is going to get even weirder than it is now. Apart from that, obviously, there is the impact on people who work in this field, creating videos, creating stock videos and stuff like that. There are software companies that distribute this stuff. Adobe, Shutterstock, uh, those are some of the big ones. Some of those companies are going to lose their control or their market size, right? This new technology is going to basically eat in their market size. And mm. the only option they have now is to come up with their own models that generate these videos as well. <laughs> okay. Competition is going to be fierce going forward. On the positive side, now we can even say that video editing or video content creation is going to be more democratized. Basically, what that means is that people who have no background in generating videos, creating videos can now do amazing work by just being good at prompt creation. If they can create good prompts to generate good videos, man, the internet is going to be great. I'm yeah. telling you, like you are going mm -hmm. to see some crazy stuff on all those video platforms going from TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and those platforms again are going to become even more valuable, but Someone can, can argue that the quality of the content, I think it might go up. The quality might go up because you have these generators that are going to generate great video qualities. But at the same time, there are some people who are trying to game the system and generate low quality stuff. But again, the internet is going to get weird. Yeah, I mean, you are totally right. On my side again, on the long term stuff, right? What I have in mind is the filmmaking industry is going to change drastically. And this is going to help actually the, the low budget or the independent filmmakers. They are the ones that don't have, you know, a lot of money and they usually compete with all the money that Hollywood, the large studios invest in their movies. Right. So we can see, we will be seeing, I don't know, you know, small filmmakers that will be making films using crazy, amazing output in terms of visuals. So that's really, really good. And potentially we can be going toward the world where in five or 10 years, we will be able to 
generate our personalized content for what right. we want to watch. Basically, you generate your movie on the spot and the AI will generate <laughs> the movie for you. One hour movie. I want it to be like very romantic. It has to be with, I don't know, a woman that turned into wolf, but is a vampire at the same time. And, you know, he's going to fall in love with a Japanese or something crazy. And the AI will generate everything for you and you just watch it on the spot. So uh, I completely agree with that. <laughs> and this is what life is going to look like in maybe two to three years. That's scary. It is scary, but... Just think about it. Everybody who has given you a video about this is not really talking about what is life is going to look like in three to five years based on the technology we are seeing. And it's moving so fast. Just think about it. You can generate a whole series, maybe <laughs> using your Apple Vision Pro headset. Apple Vision generate... Pro headset. No, think about it. Same. You just go, you say, hey, give me a movie about this, 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 and Someone has already built this app and is going to take all the contests, generate some really good storyline and create a movie for you. Yeah. And I'm sure this is going to disrupt Hollywood as well. Netflix. Right? Because Streaming what we are, Netflix, all these people who invest in creating art, <laughs> man, it's going to be tough for them because imagine what Daniel just described actually happens where someone with two sentences can generate a whole one hour movie. Why do I even need to go watch something else? If that happens, I don't know, but <laughs> that's crazy. Even video gaming, right? Anything is just anything possible. is gonna be possible now. I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with me, I'm scared. I'm really scared of the future. It doesn't look good for me. It doesn't look great, but I don't look at it that way. This is the way I look at it. Some people are going to maintain, especially if they do a good job at tagging this content and making sure that we can tell whether it's AI generated or not. If they do a good job, I don't think that some of the, the solution they have today is very good, but if they do a better job in a way, maybe this is where blockchain can actually help. If someone, because today, right, when you generate an image, there is some metadata associated with it, but there are some software that people can use to remove that metadata, which will prevent you from knowing whether the image is generated or not. So let's say that technology becomes way better, where if you remove the metadata, the video will stop working. It doesn't matter how many times you distribute the video. If you try to change the metadata because of the blockchain technology, let's assume that there is some connection there. If you remove it, movie stops working. That means that you cannot change it. And that's the whole thing about cryptocurrency and blockchain. The ledger is maintained. Let's say we have something like that. That means that Everybody can now tell whether a movie or a video, a piece of video is generated or not. That already is a very good thing to prevent the complete disruption of these old businesses, right? Like movie creation from Hollywood and stuff like that. Because people can tell what is real and what is not. Yep. That's yep. one. Number two, if the technology gets to the point where people can use two sentences to generate one hour movie and is actually good, well... Even Hollywood will have to come up, come to the, this side and generate movies using OpenAI or some other technology, right? Yeah. <laughs> Even though there will be disruption, I think this is a time for people to really, really learn about this technology, mm -hmm. this generative AI technology, because if it's going to disrupt you, it's better to be on bandwagon than seeing the train get past you, <laughs> right? So don't... Ignore it. Do as much as possible to learn about this technology by maybe subscribing to this channel because we talk about this every day and we explore these ideas. So subscribe so that you can learn as much as possible. And if you want us to do more technical stuff, explain a little bit more about the science behind it and stuff like that, we can do it. So subscribe and comment down in the video. Let's actually talk about the stock market, how this is going to impact some of the, these companies. One of the things that I saw that might happen is that today, the reason why the other companies like Stable Diffusion, Runway ML cannot really generate as good of videos as Sora from OpenAI is probably because they don't have the computes. They don't have the GPUs. If this is something that catches on, meaning that people really like generating videos using AI. What that means essentially is that there will be more GPUs sold. 
okay? NVIDIA is going to be the, the primary winner from this in the short term. That means that more companies, especially the Adobe's, all the other like Getty Image, Shutterstock, all these companies are going to be forced to buy GPUs so that they can also generate, create their own models and compete with open AI. If not, they are going to lose business. So in the short term, NVIDIA is going to win if this company decide to invest in AI, which they are already doing. NVIDIA is ultimately going to be the biggest winner. Some of these companies are going to see a little bit of uh, downside in the short term until they catch up. Other winners are going to be people like Microsoft, Microsoft because yeah. they are providing the compute today to open AI. And Apple, you have to include Apple here because they are not saying anything about generative AI yet, yeah, this, right? They, are, they haven't giant. made any announcements. And looking at the data, they haven't purchased as many GPUs as the others. Right now, only Meta and Microsoft are the biggest purchasers of GPUs. If you look at the other companies, even though Google has their own chips and stuff like that, they are moving really, really slowly. And every time they try to make an announcement, literally the day before Google made the Gemini 1.5 announcement and OpenAI just came and killed that announcement with Sora. So <laughs> it's not going well for Google. So in the short term, some of these companies are also going to be impacted. And right now, the only way to invest in OpenAI is Microsoft. You can <laughs> buy the Microsoft stuff. But in the longer term, and you can also invest in Meta. Meta is creating some of these open source models and selling them through Amazon. So they are licensing the model. Developers want to have access to it. They can sell it through Amazon. Another market is might be created over there by if these companies, some of these companies don't want to buy the GPUs, they can buy the computes and the model through Amazon. Ultimately, Amazon, AWS is going to make money. Meta is going to make money as well. And on the, I would say, ultimately, all these companies are going to converge. That means that Every company that is investing in hardware and developing these models are essentially going to be as good as the other model, as the competing model. The Adobe model is going to converge to be as good as the OpenAI model. It's going to take time, but in the long term, that's what is going to happen. Everybody is going to have a model or they are going to purchase some of the good ones, either from OpenAI or from some other makers, Facebook or Meta or Amazon. But it's going to be the same and it's going to have almost the same quality. So once we reach that point, the only thing that is going to, or the winner is going to be the person which has the most users. That's all. It's going to be a game of users. In the long term, I think that because OpenAI is leading the pack, leading the innovation currently and gathering user attention, they might end up being the one that have the most users because they are kind of creating this category. They are leading this category. Microsoft will be a good buy for me at this point, but it's, this is not financial advice. I'm talking for <laughs> myself, okay? If you want financial advice, go somewhere else, but... <laughs> go speak with your financial advisor. <laughs> exactly. But this is something that I'm thinking. And um, I will also bet on some of the other companies that are developing these models like Meta and some of the vendors, again, Microsoft, AWS, uh, Google, Google Cloud. And for the Adobe's and the other ones, I think they are going to be more disrupted than people who actually create these models because now this market share is going to be, some of it is going to be taken away from them. So that's my analysis on the stock market. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. Yeah, don't have anything to add. Basically. <laughs> All right, guys, so, yeah, thank for you today. for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, comment. We really, really, really want you to subscribe because we see that a lot of people, 95% of you are watching the video and not subscribing. Please subscribe and comment under the video and share as well. Thank you for listening. We hope you've enjoyed the content. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. Me and my buddy, we make it all of this money. Yeah, I know it's rude to be bragging. They never catching us lagging. Me and my buddy, we working hard for this money.